Shiny Pokemon are super cool and are one of the most popular features in the Pokemon games, but there is a lot more meaning to some of their colors than is typically seen by fans in the rare event that they encounter a shiny in their games. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering a bunch of cool shiny Pokemon facts that explain the origin and meaning behind the colors of some shiny Pokemon, as well as some other cool shiny facts. Like, for instance, how Coridon and Miraidon shinies are black and white. This could be the case for a number of different reasons, as it could have to do with the game's connections to Unova at the Blueberry Academy, but it could also have to do with Coridon and Miraidon's original colors as well. Scarlet and Violet as colors are on opposite ends of the visible color spectrum, just like black and white are opposites as well, which could very well be a reason for these Pokemon's shiny colors. And with that said, a big shout out goes to today's sponsor who helped make this video possible, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. These two are subscription boxes that bring you delicious treats and snacks that come directly from Japan right to your door every month. And the emphasis is on delicious here, because in the Tokyo Treat boxes, you can get stuff like these cookies and cream Kit Kats, while Sakura Co. is a monthly Japanese artisan snack box that offers more traditional treats, and it even comes with a piece of tableware each month too. And this month, it's this adorable little kitty tablecloth, which is actually quite big, ironically enough. Tokyo Treats theme this month is Okinawa Snack and Oasis, and Sakura Ko's is Festivals of Tohoku, and they've both got some extremely yummy goodies in them. So if you would like to pick up a box and try it out for yourself, you can do so with the link in the description. And when you use code HOOPS at checkout, you can also get $5 off of your first box, and it even supports the channel as well, which is super appreciated. So give that a look with the link in the description, and a big thank you to Tokyo Treat and Sakura for supporting the channel. Some more Paldea Pokemon with neat shinies are the Treasures of Ruin, the coolest of which, in my opinion, is Chin Pao, as it becomes a Black Panther, which is actually just the name for the black colored variant of a leopard, which Chin Pao is based on. And they also are rare variants of the leopard, just like shinies are rare variants of each respective Pokemon, so this one is both extremely cool and fitting at the same time. The other Treasures of Ruin also have cool shinies as well though. Chi Yu turns into Blue Flame, which is hotter and therefore you could also say rarer than your standard flame. Wo Chin's leaves convert into fall colors, which is pretty cool. And then for Ting Lu, this one doesn't officially count as one of my 50 facts because I didn't quite nail down an exact origin, but I think it clearly has to do with the sediment that makes up this Pokemon's body and what it's composed of, since Ting Lu body resembles the layering of various sediments within the earth. So if you think you know what kind of sediment or material Ting Lu's shiny might be based on, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. Speaking of blue fire though, Chandelure's shiny essentially does the opposite thing to Chi Yu, where it goes from having a ghostly fire to actual standard orange fire in its shiny. The same thing happens with the gloves of Crab Brawler, as they go from blue to red, just like the standard classic gloves of a boxer. Interestingly, a funny sort of coincidence relating to this also happens with the actual boxer Pokemon, Hitmonchan, as its red gloves in its normal form actually become blue in its shiny, which is the opposite of Crab Brawler. So I feel like it and Crab Brawler just trade gloves with each other in order to make their shiny forms. Even more Kanto Pokemon with interesting shinies include Magikarp and Gyarados. Gyarados is unofficially the original shiny, I would say, since it is the one that you for sure have to encounter in the Gen 2 games where shiny Pokemon debuted, and it's possible that its shiny comes from the scheme of Team Rocket in those titles, and how they were trying to broadcast a signal to prematurely evolve Pokemon, meaning that the shiny Gyarados that you encounter at the Lake of Rage could have been a victim of this broadcast and ultimately evolved 
prematurely and retained that red color that it had as a Magikarp as a result. Meanwhile, Magikarp's Golden Shiny is a lot simpler of an explanation, because it's likely just a pun on the term Goldfish. However, it could also be an intentionally ironic choice, considering how common and worthless Magikarp are considered to be. Other cool Kanto Shinies include Staryu becoming the color of an actual star in the sky, which is one of my favorites, Tangela becoming more like the color of actual vines, and Voltorb and Electrode continuing to mimic Pokeballs by resembling a Great Ball. With the exception of Nidoqueen, the Nidoran lines actually swap colors with one another for their shinies, which is also really cool. And then there's Ninetales, whose ghostly looking shiny comes from its inspiration, the Kitsune of Japanese folklore and its ghostly abilities. There's also the classic Mew and Ditto connection as well, and whether or not you subscribe to that theory, I personally think there is definitely something to it. If you need a refresher, it is thought that Ditto gets its shiny from Mew, who is also blue, because Ditto is a failed clone of Mew. This claim is also backed up by a bunch of other similar connections between Ditto and Mew as well, and while it is worth bringing up that shinies in the earlier days of Pokemon were also more random in nature than they likely are today, meaning that they weren't necessarily designed by a person and instead were just a palette swap that the game made itself, that is not to say that there weren't some instances of actual intent with some of these early shinies either. And I feel like Ditto and Mew are a good example of that actual intent from the earlier days of shiny Pokemon. And another good example of that actual intent are shinies who were actually changed between games. For example, in Generation 2, Charizard had a purple and green shiny, but then in Generation 3, it was given the black and red shiny that we all know and love. And this was likely done in order to just basically make Charizard as cool as possible, since it was already perceived as a very cool Pokemon anyway, and they would obviously want to keep that going for one of their marquee characters. The same thing happened to Ponyta as well, as its shiny in Gen 2 gave it these dull, kind of orangish gray colored flames, and then in Gen 3, this was changed to give it bright blue flames instead. Possibly, once again, because of the whole blue flame thing that we mentioned with Chi Yu earlier. And while we are on the topic of Generation 2, there are a bunch of Johto Pokemon who have super cool shinies as well. Quite possibly my favorite is Ho-Oh, who gains a gold and silver color scheme in honor of the gold and silver games which it is a mascot of. Another classic is Shiny Slugma, whose gray body resembles cooled lava. Crobat, meanwhile, swaps the colors of its pre-evolution shiny, Golbat, between its wings and arms, something that it also does in its regular colors as well. Scizor's green shiny may actually come from the fact that it was originally green in color in its beta design, and believe it or not, Celebi's green coloration was originally its shiny coloration in its beta days as well. A similar sort of thing also happened to Azumarill too, where its gold shiny was once its regular color in its beta design, and Sudowoodo gains the tried and true fall coloration that many grass types, or in this case, grass mimicking types, have as well. And one of those grass types is Phantump and Trevenant, who also have one of the best Kalos shinies, but not the only interesting ones. Greninja pulls a Charizard and gains a black shiny, which is probably partially for the whole cool factor thing that we talked about with Charizard, but it also comes from the fact that Greninja is based on a ninja as well. 
The Chespin family, meanwhile, have shinies that more literally resemble the chestnuts that they're based around, and then Go-Goat actually had its shiny changed, as its shiny form was shown at E3 2013, which ended up differing drastically from its shiny colors that it ended up with in the final games. Meanwhile, Clauncher and Clauncher have red shinies, and this is sort of like a reverse situation to those rare blue lobsters that are sometimes spotted by fishermen in real life, meaning that the base color of these Pokemon is blue instead of the normal red, so for their rare color, they get red instead of blue. Pretty neat. Bunnelby also has a shiny that is one of my favorites from this region as well. It might look pretty mid, but it's my theory that Bunnelby's shiny is actually its true appearance, since its change consists of the brown parts of its body turning white. The same is largely true for Diggersby as well, and these Pokemon are also part ground types that are known specifically for digging all the time, and therefore naturally would be covered in dirt as a result. So it is my theory that the shinies of these Pokemon are actually the rare instances where they are clean instead of covered in dirt. Which I personally think is a legit explanation, and also a pretty cool one too. Another shiny that I really like for its cleverness, meanwhile, is Helioptile and Heliolisk, as they become sunburned since their designs are inspired by the sun. And that brings me to the region that followed Kalos, Alola, because Sogaleo, also being a sun-based Pokemon, also gains that same sunburned coloration that Helioptile and Heliolisk use. On the flip side, Sogaleo's counterpart, Lunala, turns into a Blood Moon in its shiny. And from there, there are a plethora of cool shiny Pokemon within Alola's Pokedex. For example, Mimikyu turns black and white, as a nod to Pikachu's debut on the original Game Boy, and the debut of the original Pokemon games on the Game Boy as well. Sandygast and Palosand become black in reference to black sand beaches, to Cannon, whose beak resembles a sort of heat scale in its base form, resembles a cool scale in its shiny form. Alolan Grimer and Muck gain the coloration of their original Cantonian counterparts in their shinies, and Poiple and Nagonadel are colored to resemble bees, since they are partially inspired by them. Passimian also has a neat shiny, and it also uses it as a sort of nod to its origins, since its shiny more closely resembles a football player, which it is based on. Alolan Diglett also has a noteworthy shiny too, because it gains a blue nose, and while it might not seem like much, it gets this blue nose from shiny Cantonian Diglett, and then this extends even further to Wiglet, who also has a blue nose in its shiny form as well, and overall is a nice nod to the connection between all of these Pokemon. And on a similar sort of note, Brute Bonnet has a shiny that, similar to Voltorb and Electrode, resembles a Great Ball, which comes from Fungus and Amoongus' shinies, which do the same thing. Although, their shinies are a little bit more purple by comparison, which could actually more closely resemble a Master Ball instead. Meanwhile, Lechonk becomes pink, like the stereotypical color of a pig, and Armourouge and Serulege, while extremely minuscule, have the color of their eyes changed to the color of their respective counterpart. Cloth becomes blue, referencing the blue lobsters and their rarity that I mentioned earlier with Clauncher and Clotzer, and the Smoliv family have the olives on their bodies changed to black, which coincides with the classic, more well-known color of olives, which is a very nice choice for a shiny in my opinion. A couple more Gen 9 Pokemon with cool shinies include Roaring Moon, which adds yellow to its body, which seems to be a nod to the moon itself, particularly due to the feathers on its wings changing to this yellow color, which are extended in a circular shape, much like the moon. 
Shiny Diplin and Hydrapple become gold in their shiny forms, and when they use their signature move, Syrup Bomb, it actually becomes shiny as well, as the red colored bomb of syrup that normally makes up this move's animation becomes gold instead when used by these shiny forms to match the Pokemon. The same thing also occurs with Blacephalon's signature move, Mind Blown, as well. Since the move's animation features Blacephalon's head, if the Blacephalon that is using it is shiny, the move animation will also be shiny as well. Now we're gonna jump to Gen 8 for a couple of shinies that have some interesting stories behind them. Cramorant gains a distinctive orange coloration in its shiny, and this is very possibly in reference to a news story out of the UK, which is the basis for Generation 8 and the Galar region, where a seagull accidentally fell into a vat of curry, turning it a bright orange color just like shiny Cramorant. Likewise, Colossal and its family have an interesting story of their own to tell about their shiny forms too. Their shinies are blue, which is likely a reference to anthracite, which is a type of coal which is not only considered the best kind of coal and is the highest ranked, similar to the reputation of shiny Pokemon, but there was also once a trademarked brand of anthracite known as blue coal that was sprayed with a blue dye to help it stick out from other brands, much like shiny Pokemon do as well. I would be remiss, however, if I mentioned some Galar Pokemon Shinies without mentioning Shiny Wooloo, who is black in reference to the term Black Sheep, which coincidentally is quite fitting for a Shiny since this term is used to describe someone or something that is atypical or odd compared to the rest of its kind, just like Shiny Pokemon. And I would also be remiss if I didn't mention Love Disk either, as even though it's not a Generation 8 Pokemon, its shiny, which is this beautiful bright gold color, is a clear reference to the term Heart of Gold, which makes for a pretty great shiny in my own opinion. And those were 50 cool shiny Pokemon facts. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment, let me know your own shiny Pokemon facts and who your favorite shiny Pokemon is, I would really love to hear it and it really helps out. Subscribe for more, and if you want to help videos like this even further, you can also check out my Patreon and get some awesome perks in return, or listen to my Pokemon remixes wherever you get your music, which is super duper appreciated. I will see you guys soon with another video as well, and until then, as always, thank you so much for watching this one, I really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later.